Hello, my name is Faiza Ahmed and I am a PGY2 in the Internal Medicine Residency Program at Sinai Grace Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. I will be talking about the underdiagnosed, underreported condition of Heidi's syndrome. Heidi's syndrome is a condition of bleeding from the gastrointestinal tract seen in patients with severe aortic stenosis. First reported in 1958 by E.C. Heidi, it is all the more relevant today as aortic stenosis and GI bleeding from angiodysplasia both increase in incidence as age progresses. This particular case is one of a 57-year-old African-American male who presented with complaints of bright red blood per rectum. He has presented to the hospital previously with similar complaints for which he required blood transfusion. When he came to the hospital this time, he was found to be hypotensive and tachycardic, although not requiring oxygen. On physical examination, he was found to have a systolic murmur most prominent in the aortic area with radiation to the carotid arteries. His hemoglobin was initially 8.3 grams per deciliter with an unknown baseline. This dropped down to 6.1 grams per deciliter after an episode of bright red blood per rectum while in the hospital. His activated partial thromboplastin time was 24.5 seconds, one Willebrand factor was 101%, one Willebrand factor activity was 43%, making the activity to antigen ratio at 0.42. A 2D echo confirmed his history of aortic stenosis with a measured aortic valve area of less than 0.6 centimeters squared, tagged RBC scans, mesentric angiography, esophageal gastroduodenoscopy, and colonoscopy were not able to localize the source of bleeding. We stabilized the patient hemodynamically with fluid boluses and blood transfusions and consulted cardiothoracic surgery for repair of the aortic valve, which the patient ultimately refused. With Heidi syndrome, activated partial thromboplastin time is often prolonged, von Willebrand factor antigen is low, von Willebrand factor activity is low, and the activity to antigen ratio is low as well below 0.5 to 0.7 for type 2A von Willebrand disease. In this case, the activated partial thromboplastin time, von Willebrand factor antigen, and von Willebrand factor activity were in the low range of normal. However, the activity to antigen ratio of 0.42 was well below the cutoff of 0.5 to 0.7 for this type of von Willebrand disease. In patients with severe aortic stenosis, as blood passes through the aortic valve, the multimers of von Willebrand factor get distorted due to shear forces. This distortion opens up the multimers and exposes them to the proteolytic activity of Adam TS13 and reduces the number of von Willebrand factor multimers that are present in the body. Now, von Willebrand factor is thought to have multiple functions in homeostasis. It carries plasma factor 8, a deficiency of which can increase the activated partial thromboplastin time. This was not an issue for this patient. It also improves platelet-to-platelet -platelet adhesion along with collagen binding, so deficiency of von Willebrand factor activity will end up with decreased clotting activity. Lastly, it has also been linked to integrin-mediated stabilization of the VEGFR2 receptor responsible for angiogenesis. Without this inhibitory effect on the VEGFR2 receptor, angiogenesis does occur, resulting in angiodysplasia and predisposing these patients to a life-threatening bleed. The takeaway points that are paramount here are, aortic stenosis and angiodysplasia present commonly in the general population and with increasing frequency as age progresses. Bleeding prevalence among patients with aortic stenosis is reported to be anywhere between 7 to 20%, Share induced acquired von Willebrand syndrome makes up for 21% of all acquired von Willebrand syndromes, and about 71 to 80% of all patients with severe aortic stenosis have loss of von Willebrand factor multimers. There is a straightforward fix to this potentially fatal problem. Repair of the aortic valve lessens the turbulent flow and shear forces that open up von Willebrand factor to degradation. This is first-line recommended therapy and should be offered to any patient that presents with this syndrome as bleeding stops after repair of the valve. The most important issue is to recognize this syndrome so that the appropriate treatment can be offered, as blood transfusions are only a stopgap measure and do not correct the underlying disorder. The definitive intervention of aortic repair helps alleviate a possibly lethal condition. Thank you very much for your time today.